Mm, I see it. Um, Tonight, we are following up on the city of Aurora's plans to close an apartment complex that houses a large population of new immigrants. And they're closing it because of code violations. Some believe, though, there's more to the story. They say it involves a South American gang. Denver 7's Brandon Richard shows us how city officials are responding to those accusations. Well, if you've been on social media here in the last couple of weeks, you may have seen a lot of information being shared about a Venezuelan gang that people say is causing all kinds of problems in Aurora. Well, this morning we learned APD has set up a task force to look into those allegations. The city of Aurora says it's closing this apartment complex near Colfax and Peoria due to a long list of code violations going back years. We are not buying this. Aurora City Councilwoman Danielle Jarinski and some of her colleagues believe there's more to the story. We believe that, yes, there are code violations, but this started because of a gang takeover. That's what we believe. The company that manages the site says the same thing, that a gang from Venezuela had taken over the property, making it too dangerous for their staff to be there. Aurora police have not said whether those claims are true, but say they are investigating. I know it's been shootings here, but it's not because of people from here. It's people from all the places that comes here um, looking for problems. Residents at the complex told us no manager has been on site for a while. We've been trying to um, get in touch with the manager. He quit and uh, we have no manager. At a public safety meeting Thursday, Aurora Mayor Mike Kaufman once again pointed to code violations as the reason the city was closing the complex. I, I know that the owners are talking about that, that it's, it's a gang issue. It, it's, it's really, it, the problems there uh, go way back. On top of creating a task force to look into alleged gang activity, Aurora police say they've also started reviewing criminal reports from the past year to see if they were gang related. So we we're actively looking at those things right now conjunction with the task force our federal and state partners also. Councilwoman Jarinsky says it's long overdue. I think it's coming maybe six to eight months too late, um, but I hope that we are able to track some of these people down. But she hopes it will finally provide some answers. In Aurora, Brandon Richard, Denver 7. And that gang that some claim has taken over that property was designated as a transnational criminal organization by the White House last month. And today, an ICE spokesman told Denver 7 they are aware of recent violent crime involving members of that gang and say they are working with partner law enforcement agencies. I wonder, do they got mopeds? Most likely. Hello? What's up? Common Sense 101. The Venezuelan prison gang known as Tundiaragua has taken over an apartment complex in uh, Aurora, Colorado, right outside of Denver. Um, Damn, I was just there. Manager known as CBZ Management has been trying desperately to regain control of their apartment that they have just spent $300,000 to bring to code with renovations, but they can't even go in there because the Venezuelan gang has taken over their apartments. The um, um, city has denied the allegations, local officials and the media, including Kyle Clark of Nine News have denied the allegations even though they have posted eviction notices on the doors of residents and given them a very short amount of time to move out, find somewhere else to live, figure it out, we don't care. If this had been Cherry Creek, if this had been Greenwood Village, Jared Polis, the Colorado governor, would have sent in the damn National Guard. But because it's full of black and brown people in Aurora, nobody cares. This is yep. a very dangerous problem. <laughs> this is just a testing ground. You need to understand this. This CBZ management says, we would like to be able to resume normal operations at our buildings, but we cannot do so under the threat of present and immediate danger against residents, staff, and management. The spokesperson for this company goes on to say, this is an issue our city needs to face head on with law enforcement 
and the further support of our state and country's leaders, uh, border czar Kamala Harris, to protect affected tenants, the surrounding communities, the surrounding communities and Americans across the nation. Translation, CBZ management is giving the country and the surrounding areas in Denver a heads up. Your community is next. And if you think you're protected because of how you vote or because of your location, 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 you're not. You're not safe. Your children are not safe. You better get civic minded and stop saying, I'm not into politics because politics is into you. You got Kamala Harris running around now wanting to be the head of the entire country, but she has spent the last four years ignoring the border as the, the borders are, although she was given that job. And for somebody who claims to be a baddie and a boss lady and a strong empowered woman, she didn't take the lead on a damn thing except ignoring you and putting uh, twerking rappers and fried chicken into neighborhoods to try to get your vote. Once again. I didn't get any uh, chicken. Me neither. Well, you ain't, you, 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 you ain't invited to the cookout, man. But you, you know <laughs> what, man? Um, where are groups like this? When 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 the uh the proud boys or the alt right or the um what's that other group patriot front when they do a demonstration in a city unarmed here come these groups the, the NFAC not fucking around crew they come but to the city and do all this stuff. But now you got some armed villains, well, gangs terrorizing black people in Aurora, and Aurora is a Sun City boy. Woo. Well, who are they um, to tell them people, you know, what the world they want? Those people in Colorado begged and pled for that. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Every city, every city where the Patriot Front goes, there's black people who begged and pled for whatever the fuck, um, who voted Democrat. You know what I'm saying? The, 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 when 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 Patriot Front, uh, um, the KKK gets a permit to demonstrate somewhere, that that the, the people there that voted Democrat. Yeah, the, when the KKK can't teach those people nothing, man. The only way those kind of people will learn, the Democrats and whatnot, man, they you literally got to show them the error of their ways, man. You can't you can't force them to you know think a certain way. You literally it literally got to be in their backyard. Where are these They'll Negroes? Never see it. Where are where are these people? Why are they not in Aurora, Colorado right now? Why are they in why aren't they in Aurora, Colorado right this second? You gotta show those liberals, man. You can't force them, bro. You can't. They're only gonna fight you. Look at all these and, and sometimes it'd be thousands of uh, um Negroes. I said the same thing though. Uh, I said the same thing. Where the fuck they at? Why they not in Aurora <laughs> policing that neighborhood? I ain't saying you got to go in there and just start shooting um, migrants. But why? Where's your Where's your show of force? Where's you? Like the Nation of Islam used to go in these rough neighborhoods in D.C., Clifton Terrace and shit, and serve some quarters. And I mean, tough neighborhoods. Back in the 80s and the early 90s, they would go in with bean pies and koofies and shut the drug trade down to a halt. I'm talking about shut that shit down. But nobody knows what a green light from the Venezuelans look like. We don't know what it looks like yet. <laughs> we don't know what to expect from those people. Hmm. I mean, what if what, what if one of the groups was to attack those Venezuelans, man? I mean, what would that green light look like from them? We don't I, know. I, I, I think MS-13 shit. These people here know that they're part of a black and brown coalition, so they're not going to divide that up. Oh, no, yeah. man. Man, I think those people are used to guerrilla warfare, man. Those people are not the same. And a lot of those people have been released from prison from down there. 
You know, Maduro yeah, let a lot of those freaking prisoners out. He literally emptied those fucking prisoners down there and told their ass, you you cannot stay in this country. You got to dog on move upward. You got to lose, you know, move northward. And we northward, man, you know, problem. United States. Just how we outsource our, our uh, manufacturing jobs. They did the same thing with their prisoners. Mm. Look, at all these sons guns. Look at all these sons got guns. They all fatigued up and they all got guns. All of what? them got um, long guns and they all loaded. Why can't they mind their children? That would be helpful. <laughs> but Ox showed us a video of those, you know, saying those, uh, <laughs> those, uh, I don't know if they was the uh, Black Panther Party, man, but that chose the easy route. That has a good. That that shows, you know, it's easier to, you know, to attack whites, man, you know, versus the yeah, real white threat. People, white people, yeah, white people ain't gonna shoot you. White people gonna, white people ain't gonna, um, ain't gonna put a green light out on black people. Yeah, but man, I'm kind of desperate. I'd be a liar if I said I wasn't desperate to see what a green light from those Venezuelans gonna be. Who knows? But we do need to learn their behavior, and they already took over a, a, a apartment complex. I. What's next? Come on now. Exactly. They ain't gonna stop there. And then they said they contacted the police and the FBI and they told them they wanted. Yeah, I mean, listen, um, they got more like like BC black conservative perspective says, they got more infinity stones. See, they got the the person of color stone. They got the migrant stone. You know what I'm saying? Blacks, we just got the black affinity stone. So they got more, um, they got more protection than us. Um mm. under this they outflanked us, you did? They're here to replace you. you. So the main screen- was cracking, yeah. I What's can't that? wait until the friction starts. I can't wait. I can't wait wow. until we see what the world, you know, the Venezuelans do to the blacks, the Venezuelans do to the whites, you know, to the Hispanics. I want to see how the world is all going to mix up, man. I'm kind of desperate, man. But U.S. You know, officials are on high alert as a notoriously violent prison gang is spreading from coast to coast. Trend de Aragua, or TDA, was born out of Venezuela in a prison and has been linked to crime like this jewelry store heist in Colorado. Huh. News Nation obtaining a memo warning law enforcement that an estimated 1,000 TDA members have been given oh, the green light to God attack man. officers. News Nation's Alicia Nieves joins us. Nieves. <laughs> I wonder how they got here. News Nation's Alicia Nieves have been given the green light to attack officers. Oh. Estimated 1,000 TDA members have been given the green light to attack officers. 1,000 members have been given the green light. We see in New York that those migrant yeah. gangs have no problem attacking officers. News Nation's Alicia Nieves joins us now live from New York, where these gang members have actually shot at police. Alicia, how widespread is this gang? Yeah, Anna, good morning. Uh, this is a violent Venezuelan gang. It's infiltrated U.S. cities across the country from coast to coast, becoming more brazen and organized, according to authorities. In just the last two months, we have had at least three major incidents on the West Coast and here back on the East Coast. Uh, wow. Just this past week, as a matter of fact, authorities have linked a member of Tren de Araguas, uh, gang members to a violent June jewelry heist in Denver. In nearby Aurora, Colorado, the gang accused is, is accused of taking control of a local apartment complex, using it as headquarters of the operation. And the footage you're seeing in a second here actually shows lawyers, or what lawyers representing several apartment complex say is the gang seizing control in, of these apartment complexes, leading to gang violence and numerous code violations. Now, throughout the country, police departments, as you noted a moment ago, uh, warned that the gang leaders yeah. have given members in the U.S. the green light to shoot officers. And I just think it's interesting that uh, in Europe this happens, and it's uh, typically Muslim gangs taking over the buildings. But here we have a Venezuelan gang. You know, yeah, no go zones. They're gonna make it a no go zone. That's what the, that's what the Muslims do. They make it. They make it where ambulance can't come up in that motherfucker. Um, salute to Deluxe Two Four Seven, aka Cal Ripken, aka the real MVP, coming through once again. 
and look how they cover it. They say that the, this gang has infiltrated. No, they were welcomed into this country, invited, shipped here, all but. But they're now we're now we're supposed to think this is some sort of infiltration. This was predicted. This was we were told this was going to happen. They brought all these people in anyway, and now it's happening. Yeah, they, they oh, stopped sneaking we're... in like decades ago. They're not green light. Past. What's that? the U.S. the green light to shoot officers and unfortunately that memo coming after an incident happened already here in New York City in June as you said a moment ago two NYPD officers were shot by a man living out of a migrant cell shelter that man Bernardo Raul Castro Mata uh, after his arrest actually identified himself as a member of Trinidad and allegedly told police that he crossed the U.S. border came to New York and when he got to the shelter in the city the 19 year old was recruited by the gang to commit robberies and even given a gun. Now, Castro Mata also told investigators that gang leaders actually have been instructing a lot of their members here in the U.S., especially here in New York City, to bring guns into shelters. And they're able to do so relatively easily by utilizing food delivery services because food is not scanned uh, through the security system at these shelters. So this is obviously a growing concern, not only here in New York City, but again, across the country from the West Coast to the East Coast. We do know federal agencies are on this and trying to work with local officials to curb this growing gang activity. Yeah. Well, it sounds like if that's the weak spot, they need to start scanning the food trucks then as they're coming through. <laughs> Alicia, thank you so much. Or... Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below to get more of hey. News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage. No, no, it's crazy. Those, Law those, enforcement got the green light before the sun. That's crazy. Hey, this is a joke to them. He's like, they just cracked the joke about it. Like, this is silly. This is fun for them. Yeah, right. Man, the Hello? implications that it's going to be crazy. We start tonight at nine with a dire message for those living at this condemned apartment complex here in Aurora. It says, save our souls. You see the letters right there, SOS. A message written out in rocks in the middle of this complex. This is located near Nome Street. Well, people there have just a few hours left before they'll be forced to leave. Tonight, we're speaking with a family that is impacted and learning more about their situation. Fox 31's Greg Nieto joins us live now with the very latest on their emotional story. Greg. Yeah, Matt, you know, in the middle of the quad of that building, there's a big sign or flag that reads, need more time. Unfortunately, tonight, time is running out. For many families in Aurora, this is a week of going back to school. For the families of 1568 Gnome Street, though, it's the final hours of calling this place home. The city giving these residents until 7 a.m. tomorrow to be out. In the parking lot is where we first meet up with Ethel and her husband. So where are you going to go? We don't know. Ethel says city-issued hotel vouchers won't help them much because she and her husband were never asked to sign a rental contract. They're asking for contracts. They're asking for, what? you know, this receipts. They never gave us contracts. They never gave us receipts. They just took cash. The city says it continues to work to find solutions via hotel assistance and deposit assistance on new places for the more than 85 people to now live. The city's been committed to providing resources the entire time. Labor, and Moises. Up on the fourth floor is where we meet Iriana Perez. She shows us the unit she shares with her three children and her cousin. No tengo luz en la cocina, él no cumplió con right. eso. No me daba respuesta. She says for the past three months, she's always paid her rent on time, but has had continuing issues with lighting in the kitchen and issues with the front door and pest control problems. Also, half the month of August nearly gone doesn't give her family much time to find permanent housing moving forward. <laughs> Meantime, Ethel and her husband are off to get a bite to eat and then back for a final night on Nome Street. They would always tell us tomorrow, 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 and tonight, tomorrow never came. 
And again, the who's to blame uh, carousel, if you will, continues. The uh, city says the property management team is simply not doing enough to help these residents and in, in interview with that property management team last week. They say that that building is actually being controlled by a certain gang and they feel helpless. There's nothing they can do about it. In Aurora, Greg Nieto, Fox 31. New at nine, she's accused of hitting a man. Okay, so yeah, man, um, you guys... You think it's gonna get worse or better? It's but gonna only get let me, worse. Let me ask this. Let me ask this. Do you guys think this will reach the level of being a camp, a topic that is addressed by the candidates? No. Yes. Yeah. Trump's not gonna let it slide. That's He's a good question. Yeah. He's, that's that's one of his best sort of campaign issues. Is this this kind of stuff? And it speaks okay, do you think people. it'll be a topic that Kamala and Tim Walls will address? That's no, what I was just getting at. That's not going to yeah, be on the yeah. media. They're not going to be able to address this. In some kind of way, they're going to elaborately, you know, walk that down. All it needs yeah, is more right. money thrown at it. It just needs more money thrown at it. That's all. The, That's the Trump can say it. And illegal immigration are the It's because we don't have enough low income they housing. They won't talk about them. We need to get more money for low-income housing to help these people. This is what that's their solution. Hello, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, this is Ben again. Uh, just so you know, this happened, I guess, last week, and they now just charge him. It's been two years. It's fake flight instructor killed student, and his name was Philip McPherson. He apparently faked everything for his credentials, and there was a glider. Obviously, this guy is, you know, a son man himself. And he killed this man, Keith Kozell. If you look up Pilot Debrief, the channel, I sent the link in the comment section. It is just appalling what this guy just did to this guy two years ago. It's in the back and chat. He faked his way through. Yeah, it's in the chat. This one right here. Okay. For the panel. Like, you, okay, uh, yeah. just to be known, too, I verified. Um, the picture and the thumbnail, that's the man, too. So it said this video isn't a, it said this video isn't available anymore. Oh, they must have got rid of it because so much flack was coming by. So long story short, this man had uh, one of the instruction or one license to uh, fly, but not to actually teach. And for whatever reason, they didn't question it. They thought hey, this would be a great idea for him to actually be a part of, you know, their programs. And I think this gentleman, his name was Keith Kozell. And I can spell out the guy's name too. Um, who's the, the pilot himself, but long story short, uh, the pilot himself, Philip McPherson, took him up on a plane. And when they're flying up, they just crashed within like five minutes. And what happened was they only had one seat. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, one seat next to the door. That's the only one they had. Uh, the guy stumbled out and he told uh, witness, I'm sorry, not witnesses, but authorities after the fact that he was trying to be a hero, pulled um, Cozell out. And but he, for whatever reason, he just lied. But there was uh, several witnesses that were there, and basically said no. We saw the whole thing after the crash, which McPherson did. He just simply got out as fast as possible, and right when the explosion happened and you know fires, you know coming out, he just ran and he actually fled the scene. This is just crazy. So yes, you know, wow. DI strikes again. Wow, I got to, if you find a video on that, you, know, you tell me. Um, yeah, um, the only one I found was uh, Pilot Debrief, but then you just read a bunch of articles, but there's no, like, videos, unless you just type in the local news. Um, Keith, like, K-E-I-T-H, and then Kozel, K-O-Z-E-L. And you just watch a few, like, little clips, but obviously, you know, they don't talk about, you know, who, you know, uh, Philip McPherson Jr. is. But no, he is definitely a sun man. So he was just basically lying his way to, to be an instructor and wasn't certified. And, you know, just. Okay. Wow. Wow. Um, I think it would be better if we if we got to see that video. Um, let's see. Uh, um, let's see what else is going on here, man. Um, and. Sounds like this woman's not going to vote for Kamala. Okay. 
Um, let me, let me, uh, let me see what else is going on. Uh, what's this? Terrified wave of violence. Okay, so that's. Uh, let's see what this guy talking about. I told you America wasn't ready for the Latin American criminal. Right now, as we're speaking, there are two apartment complexes in Aurora, Colorado, that have been taken over by Venezuelan gang members, right? To the point where they told the landlord, bro, you come around here, man, we're going to take your life and we're going to take your family's life, right? Landlord's scared. Landlord go to local law firms and they say, no, we could do about these squatters because it's squatter laws, bro, right? He says, man, try to contact the FBI. FBI say, hey, my man, that ain't our problem, right? The Department of Homeland Security said, that ain't our problem, bro. The landlord is just like, yo, what the hell is going on? What do I do? Bro, these dudes are collecting rent on behalf of the landlord in the building. And every single time somebody moves out of one of the apartments, they're bringing in more uh, Venezuelan migrants into it. Think about it. Like, think about your situation paying rent to the landlord where you could be like, you know, fuck off, see you in court. Or, you know what I'm saying? See you in housing court. Um, or you can just be like, you know, I ain't got it this month. And they're going to send you a letter. They might see, keep sending you letters or, you know what I'm saying, um, to show up in court if you don't pay. But the migrant gangs, man, they're not going to be so nice, man, when you don't have your rent money. Yeah, they're not dealing with gliders anymore. Yeah, they 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 not going to tell you to meet them in court. They're not going to give you an extension. It's just like, yo, what the hell is going on? What do I do? Bro, these dudes are collecting rent on behalf of the landlord in the building. And every single time somebody moves out of one of the apartments, they're bringing in more uh, Venezuelan migrants into it. Talking about they're patrolling the building with guns. Like, what? In America? No way. That shit it sounds like like sign out of a movie, bro. If you no import the third world, you right become now. the Imagine third world. That landlord, bro. He probably called in the bank like, hey, yo. Yeah, man, uh, the Venezuela migrants got your, your mortgage payment. It was on the Venezuela who? You owe us that money. You better pay up, bro. There's nothing he could do about it either, man. Because if he try to do something about it, he's going to get locked up. <laughs> yo, 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 I'm sorry. A lot of y'all don't like this, man. But if you're still convinced that the USA don't need a motherfucker like Trump, you got to be fucking crazy, man. Trump is the only one that's going to be aggressive of now, man. So come up to him and be like, all right, everybody, get the fuck out, man. Kicking doors down and shit. Sending everybody over there, man. Deporting everybody. At this point, man, it's needed. Whether you like Trump or not, whether you are a Democrat, it don't matter what you are, man. Uh, shit is getting fucking bad, man. And if you think it's not going to affect you, just give it enough time. Give it enough time, man, because it's only starting. You know, it's bad when he like, yo, Trump, I need you to get all my cousins the fuck out of here. <laughs> Facts. He know what he know. Listen, they know. Like we know about niggas, they know about each other. So they know what time it is. Politics. Um, never have been. I try to stay out of those conversations. I've always respected what everyone feels and thinks. I still do. But I don't think a lot of you understand what's happening in our country right now, mainly because most of you don't live in a sanctioned city um i live in denver um so the people that are living in these sanctioned cities we are slowly losing control of our city um our cities and the government's not doing anything um governor polis in colorado he is not doing anything about the apartment complex that has been taken over by venezuelan gang members that have come over illegally um, they have robbed 10 gun shops in in Denver in the past month. They Jeez. are strapping. <laughs> so they, 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 listen, they got a fucking, what they call an arsenal, a goddamn armament. Of a, <laughs> they got, yeah, hey, is, they on game time. They on game time. Whatever reality we living in, they living in something else. Starting to sound like a organized, uh, you know, militia. Hey, uh, who you think she voted for last election, though? I know who she voted for. You know Beautiful who she woman. Voted. I know who she voted for. You know who she voted for. Who do you think she's going to vote for? Man, I already know. I already know, but yeah. man, I don't want to admit and it. And this is just the first step. They're seeing what they can get away with. And so far, they've been in this apartment complex 
for a almost a month. The police can't do anything about it. Haven't we haven't brought in reinforcements and they're just living in this apartment complex they overtook and no one's doing anything. What do you think they're going to do next? They're going to start overtaking more apartment complexes, more buildings, more facilities. What did our country think was going to happen when their time was up in the hotels we provided to them? I had a feeling they were going to start overtaking things. And that's what's starting to happen. It takes a lot to scare me. I've been to third world countries, never really been freaked out or nervous. Never thought that I would have to buy a gun to feel safe. They're and just even trying to when I families. get my gun in a couple days, I don't even know if I'll still feel safe, but at least I'll have a weapon. Um, You're not I've never been safe. against guns, but I've also never thought that I'm going to need to buy a gun for safety. Um, but here we are. Here we are. Um, and if you don't live in a sanctioned city, I really, really encourage you to do some research and see what's happening to our country. I understand if you're a Democrat, and you have your reasons, right? Abortion, you're pro-abortion and, and same-sex marriage. I, I'm fine with that. I understand we all have our own opinions.